untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu colored aggro deck built around Hidetsugu Consumes All, a 3 mana Mythic Rare Enchantment Saga that on the first chapter destroys each non land permanence with mana value 1 or less. That's also the reason why we're not playing any 1 drops ourselves, then exiles all graveyards and eventually transforms into Vessel of the All Consuming, a 3 3 Ogre Shaman with Trample, saying whenever the Vessel deals damage, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and whenever it deals damage, damage to a player. If it has dealt 10 or more damage to that player this turn, they lose the game. So it can be a fun alternate win condition. And we have a few ways to enhance our vessel between Angel Fire Ignition, putting two counters on it, giving it Vigilance, Trample, a Lifelink, Indestructible and Haste until end of turn, can also be flashed back. We also have the full playset of Kaya's Onslaught, a 3 mana instant giving a creature plus 1 plus 1 and double strike until end of turn. And double strike also synergizes very nicely with Vessel, so we can potentially pick up a plus 1 counter that will still count during regular damage. And then a Lizard Blades is another way to give our Vessel double strike if we reconfigure it. And as a 1 1 double strike, also benefits greatly from Angel Fire Ignition and the plus 1 counters from Luminarch Aspirant, which is a staple in any white aggressive deck. We're also running four copies of Killian Ink Duelist, giving us a two mana discount for spells that target a creature. So both works with pump spells like Kaya's Onslaught, now only costing a single white, as well as removal spells like Seismic Wave, dealing two damage to any targets and one damage to each non-artifact creature target opponent controls, so shines against a white aggressive decks. We also have two copies of Vanishing Verse, exiling target monocolored permanent, and then at three mana the full playset of Reckless Stormseeker, as a 2-3 being able to give one of our creatures plus 1 plus 0 and haste until end of turn, so we can potentially give our vessel haste, so we can attack the turn it transforms, and then during the night time of course gets even better. And then at 4 mana to refuel and provide card advantage, showdown of the scalds, which can also potentially put additional plus 1 counters on our vessel. And then the mana base doesn't have any basic lands, so we are quite vulnerable to Field of Ruin, but that's not a major concern, and we need all the mana fixing we can get with our dual lands and pathways. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's not ideal, a bit land heavy, only one creature, but we do have a couple removal spells. So yeah, maybe it's still fine to keep this. And then hope to pick up a showdown of the Skulls at some point to refuel. Can play our pathway on black to have access to Vanishing Verse. And then we're off to the races, opponent on an enchantment deck, and there's showdown, perfect. So I'll keep a Vanishing Verse in case the opponent plays a rune targeting their own visitor that we can punish. Otherwise, probably take one, see what they play. Maybe it's a Kami we can exile. Yep. Could also go for Seismic Wave, which deals with both Kami and Visitor. Although I might want to get Stormseeker in play instead. But exiling Kami always good value. Could also let it go to Night Time and cast Seismic Wave during the opponent's turn. I see Invigorating Hot Spring. So, could put another counter on the Visitor. So yeah, I think our plan's gonna be to pass here after attacking. And then if they want to put an extra counter on the Visitor, we can kill it with Seismic Wave, and then it will be Night. Otherwise we could have foretold Kaya's Onslaught to kind of get the same result. And hopefully we don't get punished by some instant speed pump spell. Ah, Kodama comes down. They'll probably give that haste with the hot spring. So could kill Kodama instead, which I think is reasonable. And another visitor. Alright, so the sequencing for the opponents worked out there as they didn't lose another visitor. And our opponent casts two spells, so it's flipped back to uh, daytime. 
Okay, so what do we want to do? I guess Angel Fire Ignition, Foretell Onslaught, next turn go for Showdown. When we have more mana available, seems reasonable. Gain some life back. And Red Green's not gonna have too many ways of killing the Stormseeker now that it has. Five toughness. So next turn we could maybe also just ignition plus onslaught, which threatens lethal. All right, looks like our opponent actually had the answer here with a flame discharge. That's too bad. So now what? Probably want to showdown. Maybe hit a land drop. Play a luminarch. Could also Vanishing Verse, but I think I want to get a creature in play. Although it's a close call because we can always give Aspirant Haste next turn. We also have a Seismic Wave which can maybe deal with a uh, One Toughness Visitor, kind of forcing them to use the Hot Spring counter. So it's a close call. I think going Vanishing Verse is probably the safest play. And then... I guess uh, I don't have to use it now, I can wait, although if they play an enchantment, that's maybe not a great idea. So exile visitor and pass. It's gonna be a Raiju. So do we kill our opponent here? I think we actually do between the counters from Showdown. So Aspirants into Ignition, leaving White Man untapped. Let me double check here. Add a counter from Showdown. We get Haste from Angel Fire Ignition. And double strike. We'll do it. Alright, so nice win out of nowhere, thanks to the haste from Angel Fire and the one mana Chaos Onslaught. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands, actually not that bad. Can play Killian on two, maybe play a one mana Seismic Wave. Still have a Lizard Blades. And double consumes all, so hoping to phase a couple one drops. Then showdown to refuel. So far, nothing from our opponents. Can play ignition for two mana as well. So, quite a bit of synergy with Killian. Opponents got Fable. Alright, so. Only have single red, so I cannot ignition and seismic wave. I could consume all and get rid of the goblin shaman. That seems reasonable. Get our saga going. Opponent might be a Velomachus reanimator deck, in which case exiling all graveyards is quite useful. And yeah, there we see Velomachus, so consumes all doing a lot of work. Don't want to exile our own ignition, so want to make sure the timing kind of lines up. Opponent with Hinata. That one will kind of struggle to deal with, but I can still ignition for two mana. And then maybe play, I guess, still no Lizard Blade since we're stuck on single red. Can attack for two... And then maybe play Showdown so we can start loading counters onto our Transformed Consumes All vessel here. And then can maybe give it haste with Ignition. Although then I would be wasting maybe some of the cards we find off Showdown. But yeah, the rest of my turn wouldn't be very efficient here. Unless I want to play a Lizard Blades and reconfigure it onto Killian. Which I guess is still reasonable.
Hit for four. And then we can decide if we want to ignition or go a different direction. Another seismic wave. Yeah, ignition on the vessel seems pretty neat. Although the rest of my mana will kind of go to waste. So maybe I show down in the hopes of finding red mana so I can seismic wave for just one mana here. Alright, there we go. And then... I guess uh, attack with Killian. Not sure why... It's not giving me priority with Seismic Wave here. Oh, I guess because of Hinata making it cost one more. Okay, so never mind, that doesn't work. But I can still attack with Killian. Put on double blocks. Take out a Reflection. And take out their token. We have a backup Killian, so not too upset about it. So hopefully no Magma Opus in our future, that's our main concern. Opponent has an Invoke Justice, getting back Fable. At least no Philomachus. Opponent passes. Okay, so now sequencing is important. Can start with Killian. Maybe putting a counter on Vessel. Definitely quite a few options here. Opponent still has some mana untapped. If I play both of these, then that doesn't leave enough mana for any other play. Although, you know, getting the Stormseeker out there could be nice. Just means I probably won't be attacking unless... I guess I can um, attack with a hasty Killian. Although, don't know if that's actually all that's amazing, because they can still double block, and it would just trade for a Goblin Shaman. So, I could still be persuaded to go for Ignition. On Vessel, and then I can still give a Double Strike. It's indestructible. So your opponent's gonna have to chump with Hinata. And then still take a beating. We get a plus one counter. Trample over. Opponent still takes quite a bit of damage. But doesn't lose the game at least. So now we've got a 9-9 vessel. And we're ready to potentially flashback Ignition once again. Seismic Wave can also go upstairs. So if they don't have some removal here, they're in trouble. Opponent discarding a Mirios Call and burn down the house, which would not have been enough. And yeah, her opponent explodes, so the Graveyard Hate from Consumes All getting rid of Velomachus, which they otherwise would have been able to reanimate, and then Double Strike plus Angel Fire Ignition, a great combo here, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, this hand is questionable to say the least. Triple Showdown, we're unlikely to be able to use all three in one game, and we need to hit more land drops in the meantime. Don't really have any threats. Now, Showdown is quite powerful, and we do have at least one removal spell to kind of bridge the gap. And we're on the play, which makes this a bit more palatable. So, we can kind of fire off one Showdown just to hit an extra land drop. Yeah, you know what, let's try it. And then probably want to lead with a white source. So we can maybe play turn 2 Killian or Vanishing Verse. Put 
Going on blue white. There's Killion. So now we can seismic wave for one mana potentially. And then really need that fourth land. Okay, opponent foretells a card. So don't know how I feel about playing Aspirant into a potential Doomscar. Not great, but then again we do have triple showdown, so we're not gonna lack card advantage. So maybe this is okay. And then we can still Seismic Wave if needed. And they could have foretold something other than Doomscar, of course. Alright, opponent passes, so maybe it's a Behold the Multiverse. No fourth land, unfortunately. We'll spread out the wealth a little bit. Pass it back. Nothing from the opponent. And do I want to Seismic Wave here? Yeah, maybe that's fine. Not targeting a creature this time, so it does cost a full 3 mana. Back up Killion. Could see Wandering Emperor. In which case, probably want to keep my Aspirant around. Alright, opponent falls to 5. A Memory Deluge maybe to draw. Well, this game has not really gone the way I thought it would. But, yeah, opponent at 5, still triple showdown in hand. I guess that's not a bad spot to be in. They'll have to answer the board. So now we can certainly expect a Wandering Emperor. But then we can maybe play showdown after. Gonna be a march exiling Killion, that's fine. They still have some mana untapped. Could just play a backup Killion and wait on showdown for an extra turn in case of a jewelry disruption. Just present an extra threat here. Alright, saw it coming was a card they foretold. Fair enough. I would rather resolve showdown, I think. So they played Soaring City, so they definitely have an answer to Aspirant. Well, let's see what it is. Don't think there's a point in playing Showdown pre-combat since we don't have any 1-drops. That's going to be another March for 2. So expecting Showdown to be countered. Still don't think I want to play a land beforehand, which would be reasonable to play around Jory Disruption. But if we find lands of Showdown, we want to play those. Alright, just another start coming. That's acceptable. Okay, so hopefully not too many more counter spells left, and we could always draw into another Seismic Wave to finish off our opponent. Another side coming. Well, good thing we had triple showdown. Opponent up to 7 mana, so we could see Hullbreaker Horror, but we can exile it with Vanishing Verse at least. They didn't foretell side coming, so it's going to be a Memory Deluge in response. Showdown resolves. And finds a Reckless Storm Seeker, which would be lethal if unanswered here. And yeah, we found a lot of lands, so if they have another removal spell, Fateful Absence, I guess, leaves us a clue token at least. We're starting to run low on action. There's a lethal seismic wave, so we want to be careful with the timing on it. 
and make sure the opponent cannot counter it in any way. Maybe wait for them to flash back a memory deluge. Well, we'll just have to pass here. And we'll see if they tap out. They're gonna go for a 4 mana deluge. Okay, that's kind of a, a tell here that they didn't flash back. One of them, Wandering Emperor, cannot gain any life since there's no tapped creatures. But I don't think I want to let them dig with this 4 mana deluge to find answers, so... I think we have to wave, but I'm not confident that this is gonna work. Wandering Emperor, okay. That happens. But uh, yeah, there's no target for the minus two. So Seismic Wave seals the deal. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And what do we think of this opener? No two drops, so it's off to a pretty slow start. But Stormseeker, double ignition. Seismic Wave as removal. We'll give it a try. Opponent with a turn one visitor does get exiled by Hidatsugu here. And then red mana is going to be needed. So we've got quite a few options next turn. Hopefully they play a couple more one drops or maybe one toughness creatures that die to seismic wave. Take one. And this does look like the Naya runes deck now. Opponent finds a Circle of Confinement. So probably don't want to play Stormseeker out. And then instead consumes all versus Seismic Wave. We'll consume all. So Confinement can exile a creature with mana value 3 or less, which does include our Saga once it transforms. But maybe I can play Stormseeker, have them exile it, and then can maybe ignition my Saga. Also tempting to Seismic Wave. Maybe in response to them enchanting Runeforge Champion. It's going to be a Kami of Transience. And a Rune of Speed on Kami. Can kill the Kami instead. We'll see if they maybe play another rune here. Alright, I think that's the better outcome. Kill the Runeforge Champion, although Kami of Transience also a little bit annoying. But this also denies the card draw. And Champion is scarier with that uh, discount. So I think we Storm Seek, give the Vessel haste, and that can attack. And then if they circle my Vessel, I'll be a little sad. So I could also just attack with a hasty Storm Seeker, which they maybe prioritize exiling and then next turn what does my turn look like Kaya's onslaught on vessel could be good yeah I really don't want them exiling it so maybe I make kind of the strange play of attacking with storm seeker itself so we don't put a huge target on our back And we'll see how this plays out. Showdown for a card advantage. So no Circle of Confinement this turn. Another Generous Visitor, which we could potentially get rid of with Seismic Wave. But they didn't have the green mana to cast it. 
All right, so we get to unsap. So now what happens if we pump up our vessel with Stormseeker, goes up to four, and then give it plus one plus one double strike with Chaos Onslaught. That should be enough to enable the alternate win condition here, despite not actually getting our opponent to zero. And we're actually dealing more than 10 damage because we also pick up a plus one counter after first strike damage. So more than enough to enable the alternate win condition. And yeah, we got to see it in action here. Don't get to see that every day. Alright, so I'm glad we got to showcase one of the underused cards in Standard with Hidatsugu Consumes All, a card I was finally able to showcase after cracking some mythic booster packs, otherwise it was difficult to get a playset. And uh, yeah, overall we face a very wide variety of matchups, all the way from aggro to control, and we managed to beat all of them. We've got a nice mix of interaction, as well as being able to kill very quickly with cards like Chaos Onslaught and then Angel Fire Ignition, also very good against decks that don't have a ton of interaction. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Let me know in the comments if there are any other cards from Kamigawa that I haven't showcased yet that you would like to see in action before we move on to Streets of New Capenna. But want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.